Hey, what's up? It's your old pal, Mr. Cook, and we're going to work on the Unit 2, Part 3 group work. So we already went through this in class, so I'm going to go ahead and go through it on a video, too, in case you missed anything. All right, so with our rational functions, we want to make sure to factor the numerator and the denominator um, and, and graph it out, you know, using our calculator. So, but first we want to factor. So x squared minus 16 is a difference of squares quadratic, so that's a special uh, type of factoring process where you just take the square root of the both values and then you're adding them and subtracting them. They're conjugates of each other. So we've got um, x plus 4 because 4 is the square root of 6 and then also x minus 4. All right, and then in the bottom, uh, x squared plus 5x plus 4. So I need numbers that multiply together to be 4, add together to be 5. So that's going to be 4 and 1 because they both add together to be 5 and multiply together to be 4. All right, so uh, when we have our factored expression, we can find the domains really easily. So that's going to be the first thing that we find, the domain. It doesn't ask us to find the domain, but the domain is going to lead us to our vertical asymptotes and also our removable asymptotes. So what we do for the domain is set each factor in the denominator um, in such a way that they cannot be equal to zero. Because if we have zero for these x values, if we plug in x and we get zero in either of these factors, we're dividing by zero. And that uh, creates um, you know, uh, an undefined value. So it's not going to count in our domain. So we take each of those factors, x plus 4 and x plus 1. We set them so that they cannot be equal to zero. And we solve for the x value. So um, for this one, if we subtract 4 from both sides, we get x cannot be equal to negative 4. And then for this one, if we subtract 1 from both sides, we learn that x cannot also be uh, negative 1. All right, so those are our two domain restrictions. And um, now to find the vertical asymptotes or the removable asymptotes. So uh, for this part of it, what we need to do is look at the factored form and see if any of the factors uh, cancel in the top and the bottom. And in this particular case, they do, because if you notice, we have an x plus 4 in the top and an x plus 4 in the bottom. So we cancel those out, and we're left with a simplified expression, x minus 4 over x plus 1. All right, now, x minus 4 over x plus 1 is how this graph is going to look. If you graph out x minus 4 over x plus 1, it's going to look the same as x squared minus 16 over x squared plus 5x plus 4. You can, you know, check it out if you want. We're just going to have one removable asymptote in it, like a, a hole in the graph, basically. And that's going to happen where this factor was canceled out. So even though it's still a domain restriction and it's canceled out, it takes its place as a removable asymptote or, or a hole in the graph. So this value that we got, this domain restriction right here, negative 4, becomes the x value on that hole in the graph. To find the y value, what we do is we take the x value and we plug it into our simplified expression. If you were to plug negative 4 into either of these other functions over here, you'd actually end up with 0 over 0 as an undefined answer. So this is the only way to actually get the location of that, that hole in the graph. So when we plug in negative 4 to this equation up here, the simplified expression, we get negative 4 for x minus 4 over negative 4 plus 1. So that's going to be negative 8 over negative 3, or simply 8 thirds. Now, uh, you know, you can write that in there, 8 thirds, uh, for, your, for your decimal, I mean, for, not for your decimal, but for your uh, coordinate. I like to write it out in decimal form just so then I can, you know, kind of picture where it is on the graph. So that's going to be negative 4, and then 8 thirds is 2.6 repeating. So you'll just, you know, do it real quick on the calculator. 8 over 3, 2.6 repeating. So we get 2.6 or 2.7 as an approximate coordinate. So if I were to graph it out, um, I'd go to negative 4 and then up to 2.7, so 1, 2.7, and that's where my removable asymptote or hole in the graph is going to be located. So since um, the other domain restriction, negative 1, was not removable, it's a vertical asymptote. You'll have, you know, from your domain restrictions, they'll all either be vertical asymptotes or removable asymptotes. Um, but, you know, not, not the same thing necessarily. So negative 1 is going to be our vertical asymptote. So we write out the equation x equals negative 1. This is a vertical line that passes through negative 1 on the x-axis. So here's our vertical asymptote as a dashed line. And then the equation is x equals negative 1. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we've got two asymptotes graphed out already. Now let's go ahead and look for the horizontal asymptotes. 
and the slant asymptotes. And this is another one of those cases where you'll have one or the other. Uh, remember that vertical asymptotes and removable asymptotes come from the, dom uh, from the domain, whereas the horizontal asymptotes and the slant asymptotes are going to come from the degree of the numerator and the denominator. All right, so we check the degree. Uh, you can always just use the original function for that. The degree in the top is 2, the degree in the bottom is 2. Since the degrees are the same, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote. And the way that we find it is just by comparing the lead coefficients on the two polynomials. So the lead coefficient for x squared is 1. The lead coefficient for x squared is 1. So 1 over 1 gives us 1. So that's the equation for our horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. So it's a horizontal line that passes through 1 on the y-axis. So there we go. Let's graph it on out. Good. y equals 1. And our graph is already starting to develop its boundary lines, the asymptote lines. Um, so then from here, we're going to be able to graph out uh, a pretty accurate rational function. Not, not super accurate, because that's not what we're asking for, you know, because you can kind of get super accurate from your calculator. We want to know all the properties and that you understand how the graph is going to look. So since we have a horizontal asymptote, we won't need a slant asymptote, or we won't have one, so there's going to be none there. Now let's find the x and y intercepts. Let's add y-intercept on there, too. So the x-intercepts, all of those can be found by just looking at the numerator of your simplified expression. So this is where we're going to get the x-intercepts from, just the numerator. And the way that we get that is by taking the numerator, whatever the factors are. In this case, it's just x minus 4 now. Set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So if we add 4 to both sides, we get 4, 0 for our x-intercept. And that's going to be a coordinate on the graph, so we can graph it out over here. For zero. Now let's find the y-intercept because, you know, that's it for our x-intercepts because there's only one factor up top. For our y-intercepts, we're going to plug in zero for x just like we always do. So we get uh, zero minus four, which is negative four. Oops, let me do this all at once. Zero minus four on the top, zero plus one on the bottom. So we get negative four over one, which is just simply going to be negative four. So the y-value on our y-intercept is negative four. And we can graph that out as well. Zero, negative four. Okay, so the way that this graph is sectioned off so far with the horizontal asymptote and everything, it basically creates two different regions where we're going to graph. We're going to graph to the left of this vertical asymptote, and we're going to graph to the right of this vertical asymptote. So we need to get some test points, and it looks like we already have three points already set up in the region. So in this region, it's to the left of the vertical asymptote. Your graph is going to follow the contours of the asymptote line, so it's either going to look like this or like this. So since we already have a coordinate, a hole in the graph that's going to be up here in this region, we actually know that the graph is going to follow um, the lead with that removable asymptote and be in this upper region over here. So we can just go ahead and write out you know, the, the graph for that. Since we have two coordinates down here in this region, we know that uh, the graph is going to be in this region because the coordinates are there. It's not going to pass through these boundary lines. So it's just going to follow along the horizontal asymptote, pass through the uh, x-intercept, pass through the y-intercept eventually, and then make its way down along the vertical asymptote. So there's our rational function for the first problem, and uh, that is problem number one. So now I'll make a separate video for problem number two and three and four, and that'll be it.